Welcome back. In this session, we're going to talk about the all-important second-time guest. So think about what we've done so far in these sessions. We've laid a solid foundation for our first-time guest. Now, by doing that, by investing the time that we have in first-time guest, we are set to talk about and retain second-time guest. So we did all of that work to get someone to go from first-time guest to second-time guest. And now they've come back. And that is the key hurdle that you have in the assimilation seminar. The most important step in all of this process is to get someone to come back for a second time. Now, second time guests are extremely important because someone not only made a decision to come once, and they may make a decision to come once because they're just honoring a friend, because a relative said, please come, or because they really had a one-time need, but if someone comes back a second time, that shows a greater level of seriousness. It shows a greater level of spirituality in their life. It shows that God is really doing something. So in essence, second time guests are more important than first time guests. The number of second time guests that you have come into your church is a greater indication of the future health of your church and the future growth of your church. I mean, just think about a restaurant, for example. A lot of people will go to a restaurant just to check it out for the first time. But it's those people who come back and come back again and come back again. Those are the ones who really like that restaurant. Those are the ones who are going to commit to that restaurant. People check things out for the first time for a lot of different reasons. And you should take those reasons seriously and do all the work that we've talked about so far. But then when they come back a second time, now... That shows you that there's real potential to help this person and to move them along the path from second time guest to regular attender, regular attender to fully engaged member. So second time guests are more important than first time guest, but there's more to do when it comes to first time guest. But here's also the key. Everything that you did for your first time guest also benefits your second time guest. So I'm actually going to be able to teach you in one session the steps in moving someone from first-time guest to second-time guest because so much of what we covered in the previous sessions impacts second-time guest. So you'll notice in your notes, I'm going to jump straight into during the service. So when it comes to second-time guest, I don't need to go back and cover from the street to the seat, the four areas of first contact. I don't need to talk about any of that because if you're doing that well for your first-time guest, then it's going to help your second time guest. And by the way, if you're far enough into the implementation process and you've already made some of those changes that we've talked about in your church when it comes to your parking lot or when it comes to your greeters, you're probably already getting positive feedback from your members. Because think about that. All the things that you do to create a welcoming environment for your first time guest, they also benefit those who attend every week. So maybe they're noticing the change in landscape. Maybe they're noticing your follow-up is getting better when it comes to prayer requests and things like that. So all the changes that we've made so far have a compounding effect. And so now we can move straight to during the service. When a second time guest comes to your church, the number one thing you want from them during the service is the connection card. You saw that coming, right? You knew I was going to say connection card. You just as you want to get a first time guest to fill out their connection card, you also want to get a second time guest to fill out the connection card. You will use the same connection card script. You will use the same process. Get your members and regular attenders to fill out the card first. Have your first and second time guests fill out the card. Have them mark that they are first or second time guests. All that we've talked about so far. But here's the difference. When it comes to second time guest, we want to look at not just the front of the card like we did with first time guest, but we really want to look at the back of the card. Because first time guest, they may or may not check a lot of next steps on the back of your card. Now it's very likely they will share a prayer request. It is very likely that if you pique their interest about something, they may sign up. But we really want to focus on helping second time guest take next steps. Now, if you look at my sample connection card, you'll notice on the back of the card, it's divided into two areas, what I would call the major left-hand side and the smaller right-hand side. It's smaller on the right-hand side, but it's still very important, so I'm not going to call it minor. I'm just going to say smaller. But the major left-hand side of our card, by and large, those next steps are customized to that week's message. 
Now, if you're at a size and you have the ability in your church to customize the left-hand side to your message, by all means. But if you can't, you may think of the left-hand side as the key next steps that you want to offer people every week. Next steps like becoming a follower of Jesus, learning more about membership, learning more about small groups, uh, learning more about the church. And then, of course, you'll notice this is also where we do sign-ups for our small groups, and we have the ever-present prayer request line. Because Second Time guests now have come back, they have greater needs, they may be more willing to share prayer requests. But then, on the smaller right-hand side, we have a whole bunch of next steps that people can take. Everything from spiritual next steps like becoming a Christian and baptism to specific fun events they may sign up for. But here you really want to help a second time guest get plugged in and you're measuring in essence the health of your second time guest area by how many second time guests take next step. So think about that when you're talking. Think about that when you're developing flyers or you're promoting different things that are going on. You can get second time guests involved in a lot of ways. And before we leave this session, I'm gonna show you three key ways that you can engage second time guests on the connection card. But just remember, the connection card matters for everybody. First time guest, second time guest, regular attenders and members. But for the second time guest, it's the back that is most important. So we wanna get the second time guest to complete a connection card, hopefully take some next steps. Once they do that, then we move into the follow-up. And that's the next area of moving second time guests to regular attenders. Just as you follow up on your first time guest, you also want to follow up on your second time guest. And now these fill-ins in your notes are gonna look very similar because it's, it is similar. The first follow-up point with your second time guest is a 36-hour follow-up via email. Within 36 hours of a second time guest filling out a connection card, you wanna send them a follow-up. Now this follow-up is in some ways similar to the follow-up you did with first time guest. It's dear first name or dear first uh, husband and wife or whatever the case might be. You thank them for coming back a second time. You can even have a second time guest survey, and we have that, and you can see samples of that in your resource uh, guide. So a second time guest survey. But what you're really focusing on in this email is challenging them to take some next steps. So in essence, you're customizing this email to the next connection event you have at your church. Maybe it's gonna be a fun event that you're doing as a church, maybe something at the church property or something off the church property. I'll show you a little bit more about that later. Maybe it's an opportunity for them to sign up for a group. If you know something about them, maybe you wanna tell them about the different groups that are going on in your church. Or if you use the small group system like I teach and you do the semester-based small groups and it's time for them to sign up, you can go ahead and tell them how they can sign up for a group. Or if you're not having sign-ups now, you can say in a month you're going to be able to sign up for these groups. Or maybe you're telling them about the next membership class or about the next baptism. But this is an email that the bones of it stay the same, but then the skin is a little different each week based on the upcoming events. Because what you're trying to do here is you're trying to get second time guests to take a next step where they can now start building relationships inside the church. And so you wanna get them around members of the church. You wanna get them serving in your church. You wanna get them to go to a, events at the church. You wanna move them to somewhere that they can be known by other people and that they can know other people. So in that email, you're customizing that according to what's going on in your church. So 36 hour follow up via email, basic bones of the email, has a second time guest survey, and then specific events that you are promoting. Again, samples in your resource. The second area of follow up is, as you might imagine, a 96 hour follow up via mail. So this time we're once again putting a letter in the mail to our second time guest. Now in this case, I don't necessarily think it has to be a handwritten note. Uh, you're welcome to do that. Uh, you're welcome to put this one in a business size envelope and maybe just hand address the outside of the envelope. But it, again, it's not a form letter. It is a letter that you customize each week. 
knowing that certain paragraphs might be the same, but you're again changing out the dates for upcoming events. You're, you're challenging them to get connected in some way that's relevant based on the season and life of your church. And we have some samples of that. You might also give them a link to that survey, something very simple like your church website forward slash survey two for your second time guest. But I also include in this letter a second gift. Now, one of the things I've learned is whatever you reward will get repeated. That which gets rewarded gets repeated is how I often say it. So you rewarded your first time guest for coming by giving them that initial gift card. Now they come back and they say, you know, I better fill out that connection card because the last time I filled out that connection card, I got the gas card or whatever it is you sent them in that first time note. So they fill it out again. So now you want to reward them. Reward them for filling out their connection card a second time, and I send them a second gift. In the first time letter, they often get something very basic like a gas card or a subway or bus pass. In the second time letter, I might give them something a little more fun, like a gift certificate to a local ice cream place or a gift certificate to some family-oriented type place. Again, $5 where they can go get a cone of ice cream or uh, get a soda or whatever the case might be. But it's something fun, and I reward them. In fact, sometimes I think I reward them so much that even though I don't have a third time guest box on my connection card, they will sometimes write it in, hoping that there might be a secret third time guest gift. But there's not. There's only a second time guest gift. But there's a letter, a letter that is customized based on upcoming events in the church, a letter that has the survey, a letter that has the gift. And you do the follow-up. Now, as you're doing this follow-up, remember, prayer is so very important. Uh, in fact, prayer for your second time guest should, if there is such a thing, take a higher priority because they have come back. So maybe with your second time guest, you don't just pray for them once that week. You pray for them many times over the course of the week because they have come back. There's clearly something going on in their life that says there's potential here. There's opportunities to really minister and opportunities to see life transformation, which remember, that's what this is all about. Life transformation in the lives of these people. So we follow up with them. Now, let's talk about um, connection opportunities, and that's letter C, connection opportunities. When someone comes for the second time, they sh they're showing interest in your church. And part of what you want to do is help them get connected through different opportunities. So you're talking about these connection opportunities on a Sunday and you have signups for those next steps on the back of your connection card. You're talking about these connection opportunities in your email and in your uh, mail package that you're sending them. But what kind of connection opportunities are they? What are the best connection opportunities for second time guests? Well, there's really three. The first connection opportunity is small groups. You know, it's not uncommon for a second time guest to sign up for a small group. Now, whether you're a church that does Sunday school or you do sermon-based small groups or decentralized small groups or stress and release small groups or semester-based small groups, whatever it is that we call this, and, and I have an entire seminar on how to maximize your small groups, how to activate really your small groups and keep those humming along at 90 to 110 percent adult participation. But whatever type of small group that you have at your church, you want to try to move second time guests into a small group. In essence, if a second time guest joins and fully engages a small group, they are assimilated in your church. Now, in my assimilation seminar, it sort of ends with membership, but we know realistically if a second time guest gets into a group, they continue to be faithful to that group, they continue to attend, you know, even if they don't go through membership class for a year or two, they are connected, they have stuck. And you wanna create stickiness in the second time guest. So you wanna get them to stick. You know, you've got them to return, now you wanna build relationships and you want these uh, sticking points in the church, these connection opportunities, and small groups are very powerful. That's one of the reasons why a growing church is always offering new small groups. And so one of the things you may have to do as you have more and more first-time guests come into your church is open up additional small group units so that you can stay ahead of the growth. And again, you can see my small group seminar for some specific ways on how to do that, have healthy, uh, ever-growing, reproducing small groups. 
But a second sticking point or connection point in our language is fun events. Fun events are one-time events that uh, second-time guests and really anybody in the church can come to and they can just have fun together. They can have fun with other Christians in the church. It's really all about fellowship. It's all about relationship. It's all about fun. And a lot of churches miss out on opportunities to connect new people by not having enough fun events. So how do you think about this? Well, you could just create some fun events. You could do a fun night at the church, you know, maybe do a game night at the church. I'm Baptist, so we can't do cards, but we could do a game night at the church. You could just create something. Or there's a lot of things people in your community, and this is really where I focus, there's a lot of things that people in your community are going to do anyway, so why not make it a church event? Maybe there's a big movie that's coming out, and it's a very family-friendly movie, so why not say, let's go to that together? We'll all go to the movie, then afterwards we'll go to dinner, or we'll go to dinner and go to the movie, or we'll go to the movie and then go out for yogurt or whatever after the service. And it's something that people are going to do anyway, but they could do it with one another, build a deeper fellowship inside the church, but also it can be a connecting point for these second-time guests. And I can tell you personally, I lead a lot of these fun events because I figure if I'm going, I might as well go with other people. And uh, there's rarely a fun event that a second-time guest doesn't show up for. In fact, when I plan these fun events, not only do I invite the church, but I may go back in the database uh, three months or two months and pull all the second time guests and send them a specific invite to this dinner or this night in the park or this night at the movies. And then a, another type of fun event is uh, maybe there's something really big going on in the community, like a parade or like a, uh, a July 4th fireworks show or whatever it might be. And you know, people are going to go down, they're going to take blankets and picnics, and they're going to sit outside. Well, let's make an area for our church, and let's all meet at the corner of Main Street and First and walk over together and, and really sit together and experience this fun event together. You may need to think of some fun events. And we work really hard, especially when our groups are not meeting. We do semester-based groups, so there's a few months a year that our groups aren't meeting, and we really try to put these fun events uh, in our calendar so that we can get these second-time guests connected. We're also very strategic about having a number of fun events after what we call our big days. So you know on Easter you're going to have a lot of first-time guests. Well, you hope to get them back. So two or three weeks after Easter, make sure you have a number of fun events, and on down the line we could go. But small groups... Fun events, and then this one may surprise you just a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't wreck your theology. But number three is service teams. Service teams. You want to promote to your second-time guest opportunities for them to start serving in the church. And you may say, well, well, should I even ask this? I mean, is it okay to ask a second-time guest to serve? I mean, you may be thinking, I don't even know if they're a believer yet, much less should they be serving. Well, let me just remind you about the power of service. Second-time guests should be asked to serve because it gives them a purpose. A lot of times people are coming back to church because they don't feel like they have, their pur they have a purpose. They don't feel like they're making a difference. They don't, they're not finding the significance in their life. Or they've just gone through some kind of trouble, transition, or tension, and, and they, they want to do something else. They want to have something positive in their life. So when you ask second-time guests to serve, you're really helping them discover their purpose. Not to mention the fact that you're helping them develop friendships because there's very few areas in your church where you can serve alone. So if a second-time guest serves in the parking lot or the second-time guest serves at a resource table or the second-time guest comes to volunteer at the church office, they're building connections, they're building relationships with people, and that can be very profound when it comes to their own spiritual growth. So there are areas at the Journey Church where people can serve without even being a believer yet. I go into more detail on that in a seminar that I have called the Ministry Seminar, which is about volunteers and building a volunteer culture inside of your church. But there are, just so you know, areas where a, a non-believer cannot serve. You know, they're not going to serve on the worship team. They're not going to probably serve as a, an offering collector. They're not going to serve in kids. Nobody serves in our kids' ministry without a background check. So there's areas where you have to be a believer. You even have to be a member to serve. But we've also created a lot of areas where second-time guests and very new people to our church, new regular attenders, can serve because I believe this helps them belong. 
It helps them rub shoulders with Christians. It helps move them forward in their spiritual life transformation process. So Jesus said, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others. In Mark chapter 10, verse 45. So we want to help these second-time guests serve. They build relationships. They find purpose. Another reason you may want to ask a second-time guest to serve is that it begins to give them a personal sense of ownership in the church. And that ownership is very important. In fact, as someone moves from second-time guest to regular attender, you're looking for them to take ownership. They take ownership of a serving area. They, can, they take ownership inside the church to do something or to participate or to sign up for something inside the church, like small groups or fun events or service teams. And really, as we'll see in the next session, that ownership precedes membership. And before someone officially signs on the dotted line to become a member, they join in their heart. And you know, you'll, you'll see that as people invest their time and invest their talent inside the church, then this becomes their church, not just the church they go to, but it becomes their church. So as you think about second time guests, you wanna follow up with them, you wanna get that connection card, you wanna follow up on that connection card, and then you wanna create sticky points, connection points, so that they stay. And the more sticky you can make your church, the more likely it is for your second time guest to stay. Second time guests are very important. So why don't you take some time right now to think about uh, how you're doing when it comes to second time guests. Maybe go back and review your connection card to make sure that second time guests are on the connection card, to make sure that during your hosting time you're talking to your second time guest, to make sure that you are praying for your second time guest, not only the day you do the follow-up, but perhaps at multiple points throughout the day, and then to make sure that you've got stickiness, that you've got enough fun events scheduled, that you have enough small groups for these second time guests, and that you've got places where they can serve. I love second time guests, and uh, the second time guests in your church are the greatest indicator of the future growth and the future health of your church. So go above and beyond and let God speak to you about what you can do in this area to take care of not only those gifts that have come for the first time, but now they've come back and they've seen something in your church that draws them back. And now let's cooperate with God and let's see how he's going to draw them to himself because someone comes back for a second time, maybe on the third time or the fourth time, they become a follower of Jesus. And then they want to move forward in baptism and move forward in their family that they found at your church. So we're going to pick this up next time by talking about regular attenders. We get those second time guests to stick. And now we want to help normalize their attendance and move them into membership. So that's what we're going to look at next time. I'll see you back then.